प्रकाश प्रकाश आई एम सो सॉरी आई एम इंटरप्टिंग विल हैव टू कम बैक टू दिस स्टोरी बिकॉज एन इक्वली इंटरेस्टिंग वन इज प्लेइंग आउट राइट नाउ मारुतिज नंबर हैव कम इन and that uh, epita number is uh, below estimates the pat number was below estimates if i saw the the revenue line flashing that also seen below estimates let's uh, see if we can go across to uh, sonia yeah the margins below estimates sonia so below oh. estimates first glance absolutely so you know i just have the top 3 numbers as you said uh, revenues at 32048 crores slightly below what the street was estimating uh, the profits as well lower than expected at 2623 crores but i think it is the ebitda number 3350 crores is the ebitda number that i've seen and uh, you know that compares to 3523 crores that the street was estimating it's still a growth i mean on the back of a low base last same time last year the ebitda figure was 2400 crores so in that context it's a 20% growth but the expectation was a 25% growth for maruti's ebitda that's also because you know the there was a healthy festive demand price hikes have been undertaken so realizations were expected to improve so this would come as a bit of a disappointment to the street uh, i'm not sure of what the margin figure is if you could help me with that one then we'll be able to you know sort of analyze um uh, what the disappoint okay 10.4% uh, i heard nigel scream that thanks nigel 10.4% is not too bad uh, really uh, 9.8 was the expectation uh, so if it is if it has come in at 10.4% then it is uh, in the poll was okay 10.7% was our poll which means it's slightly lower than what the poll had thrown up at about 10.4% but not bad so you know if you had to summarize these numbers they are slightly below what the street was estimating but there's no major negative surprise i'm just going to try and look through some uh, details but if prakash divan is still with us uh, prakash you know the stock the stock has not done much this year and i think the key trigger on which maruti will rise is the um you know the suv market share they are looking to get it to 25% from 18% currently the success of the jimny and the frongs is what we're uh, you know awaiting keenly so in that context these numbers how do they look even though they are slightly lower than estimated uh, would would you be disappointed and what's your view on the stock now so i i don't see any disappointment in these numbers sonia i mean this was a quarter that was uh, i think in utilized by the company in investing into uh, the rest of the years uh, you know the promise of future launches on the suv portfolio they they have been probably gearing up for all of that and probably in the first half of may you'll see some of these products being uh, introduced to the market and I, i'm sure they'll be very successful so the first three months have probably been put into use uh, put to use in in terms of preparing for the rest of the year and remember the chip shortage issue was not completely out of the way in that quarter it's only towards march end april beginning that we started seeing some sort of semblance of comeback and as some of the other players like tata motors and all indicated very clearly uh, this is this is this set of numbers is not at all disappointing in fact maruti on the scale that it works has been able to maintain its market share and realization as well uh, through the last many quarters and i'm sure this quarter at 10.4% margin gives you that same indication so i don't see any disappointment the stock hasn't kind of built any high expectation either so yeah so it's not that you know these numbers are going to make it uh, uh, negatively impacted got that uh, just wanted to once again point out that the margins compared to what we saw last year have gone up 130 basis points year on year at about 10.4% slightly lower than what the poll was throwing up but no major negative as prakash was also pointing out ashwin patel also joins in ashwin this seem like a decent set of numbers although slightly below the uh, the street estimates your thoughts on it and what do you see as the big trigger for the stock now because the stock hasn't done anything this year so far see i think the numbers have come quite in line with our expectations we were going on with about uh, 10.4 to 10.5% kind of margins and uh, definitely that's a good improvement on a yoy basis as well so i won't call it disappointment at all in fact it was a uh, you know a silent quarter for maruti uh, because uh, you know the impact of uh, rm costs and all was uh, uh, you know with with the inflation in still going on i don't think that rm costs must have helped them a lot but uh, you know the increasing uh, dependence on the suv i mean i won't say dependence increasing market share in the suv segment and all the product mix has must have improved this quarter definitely and that's why these margins have come 
So it was a silent quarter, I would say, but the numbers have come quite in line with our expectations. And definitely going forward, we would see the couple of launches that are uh, happening, uh, France and Jimny. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so from May onwards, we can see an additional stream of volumes as well as revenues uh, coming from Maruti. And uh, definitely FY24 should be a good year for them with these launches, as well as, uh, uh, you know, the realizations are improving. And uh, also, you know, the El Nino impact, I don't think that will be, you know, it's actually the, you know, the med departments are saying that it will be quite neutral. So the rural leg of Maruti also will be seeing a good demand. So I think that on and on it will be a good year for Maruti. Uh, but the question really is, although it could be a good year, right? Is there too much valuation headroom? Uh, and Abhishek from Sher Khan is also joining in. So Abhishek, I wanted to get your thoughts in on this as well. Maruti, if you look at it, is trading at around 24 times FY24 earnings, while about 20 times FY25 earnings. Given that these this quarter's numbers are not great, uh, largely in line with estimates, a little bit of a disappointment um, compared to estimates. Do you see a lot of valuation headroom now for Maruti? Uh, see, if you see that uh, for a larger part of a time, uh, we haven't seen a significant re-rating in the stock. So whatever the valuations we are saying that it's reflecting the current picture. But going forward, if you, if you put a uh, few minutes on this number, that this was the consecutive fourth quarter when company has reported a sequential improvement in the EBITDA margin. One. Second, that uh, uh, as, uh, as it, the other person, has, other analysts had rightly said that this quarter was a silent quarter and largely impacted by the uh, dealer inventory management because of the implementation of BS6 uh, phase 2 norm. But going forward, if you see that, uh, uh, especially on the market share side, which would drive its evaluation is that we see the, its market share in a, two, in a different way. Uh, as you know that uh, Maruti is not present in the diesel segment. And if you ex assume that the diesel segment is constituting roughly 20% to the total PV segment, then the Maruti's addressable market is roughly 80% of the total market. And it has an overall market share of 40%. So it has a 50% kind of a market share in the uh, uh, petrol, uh, petrol plus CNG segment. Mm -hmm. Now, going forward, if the diesel segment would shift towards the CNG or petrol segment, which we are seeing in the urban area, then definitely its market share would improve and uh, market share improvement would directly reflect in the improvement in the uh, uh, valuation. And on the volume side, uh, as we have seen a pre-COVID area when the dealers were sitting on the inventory, uh, dealer inventory, and now the dealers are uh, dealers are observing a waiting period and uh, uh, demand is higher than there was a supply. Then uh, in, in context of this kind of a scenario, uh, I think the valuation upgradation uh, is uh, still there. They're All right. For well uh, All yeah. right. Abhishek uh, and, uh, you know, Ashwin, thanks a lot for joining in and giving us your view on Maruti's numbers. So just to summarize, by the way, Maruti has also announced a capacity addition of up to 1 million. They will be funding that capacity through internal accruals and that capacity addition is largely to meet higher demand. So that, of course, is a positive sign. So just to wrap up, uh, it's it's been a healthy growth this time around slightly below street expectations, but I don't think it should be too much of an issue. 19% revenue growth. The margins have gone up 130 basis points year on year at 10.4%. As the analyst was pointing out, it's the fourth consecutive quarter for margin improvement. And the big trigger really is what Maruti manages to do in the SUV segment, whether they can get their market share to that 25% guided mark. So that's the next big thing that the street is watching. But all in all, slightly below street estimates, but nothing major to worry. It's back to you guys in the studio. Sonia, just want to point out, I think this uh, capacity expansion announcement is the big kicker for Maruti. Yes, I mean, we can quibble over the slight miss on margin here and there in the fourth quarter, but look at the signal uh, because they're adding 1 million units, that's 10 lakh units, and their total existing capacity at Manesar is 13 lakh units, uh, Manesar and Gurgaon uh, put together. And they're saying that that is fully utilized and therefore they're putting up this additional uh, 10 lakh units, 1 million units is what they're talking about. And perhaps that's something that the market can take heart from. Uh, stocks actually turned into the green right now. Not too much, Nigel, but uh, slight uptick coming in on Maruti. But yeah, I, mean, 